Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at the top five growth stocks going into 2023. And we actually have two bonus growth stocks that we're going to throw in at the end of this that could also be interesting ones to look at. Now, this video has been part of a three-part series where we already did the top value, top dividend, and now we got the top growth stocks. But we're actually going to take this one step further heading into 2023. And we've been asked a few times to look at things like the top REIT stocks, or real estate investment trusts, the top energy stocks, the top utility stocks. So we're going to try to go through and try to value them, try to identify which ones could be the most interesting for us to research that we could consider adding to our investment portfolio. But before we get into that, let me tell you real quick about an investing platform that we're building. So we've got our private investing community hosted over on Discord. On Discord, we got a whole bunch of different investing channels where we all talk, share ideas, do some research projects together, and ultimately try to get better as a community at investing. We also do a couple investing live streams, private investing live streams every week. Some, we do a valuation live stream, we do a portfolio live stream where we talk about my portfolio, we build the different portfolios. Plus, we do a research, a research live stream where we try to analyze companies together and go through the process together so we could all get better at it. Okay, now let me tell you about the website that we're building. So we already built the beta version of our discounted cash flow calculator. And the idea is that we would have a website that has a bunch of different valuation methods. So it could be, how do you value banks? How do you value a large cap company? How do you value a real estate company? How do you value a company with no growth or negative free cash flow or negative profits? There's different ways to value all different types of companies. So that's where the website's trying to go. For now, we've already got the beta version of the DCF calculator up there. We're just gonna keep adding from there. Now, if you'd like to sign up to get access to our investing community, as well as the website, I will leave a link in the description below. Okay, now let's jump over to our top growth stocks. So our first one is Advanced Micro Devices, AMD for short, ticker symbol AMD. Now this one's an interesting one because I actually personally own shares of Intel, which is a competitor of AMD. And if you're curious, AMD is a semiconductor company. It's one of the faster growing semiconductor companies out there. In fact, one of the biggest criticisms I've received on this channel about owning Intel is why would you go up against the growth that AMD has had? And for me, it was always been a value thing. But interestingly, AMD stock is down a little less than 60% over the past year. Intel's also down, but it's down a bit less under, it's down a little less than 50%. So the interesting part is that, the interesting part about this is that I like AMD much better at this price. As we can see with the stock just below 70 bucks per share, we're getting a fair value of $76 per share. And I should point out that all of these numbers are gonna be fairly conservative because we just took the standard numbers coming out of analyst estimates. If we're wondering, these are analyst estimates down here. Analyst estimates, we take those going out three years. For growth stocks, many times it makes sense to go out further than that, but you can only really go out further if you've done the research. To illustrate that, the next growth stock that we have is a company that I've recently done the research on, and that is Meta Platforms, ticker symbol, ticker symbol M-E-T-A. So we can see here that we're getting a fair value for Meta stock of about $109 per share. Right now, the stock's trading at about 119. But back in early November, I actually did a deep dive on Meta. Meta, again, is a company that I personally own. And the interesting part about that is after I was able to do my analysis, you might realize that, hey, it doesn't make a ton of sense to have growth going out for three years, coming from analyst estimates. And then because we're using a perpetual growth rate of 2.5%, the assumption is that all the fast growth that Meta has experienced will immediately go to 2.5% and stay there forever. That's a, a very conservative number. So this 109 is really one of the more conservative approaches to coming up with a fair value for something like Meta. So in my analysis, what I did is I went out six years and I gradually tapered off the growth, again, leading to the 2.5%, but that tapering off shifted the fair value to over $180 per share. Now, at that time, Meta was trading in the mid-90s, I believe, and it, was, it looked like a screaming buy. I actually bought some more shares down there trying to bring down my average cost. So Meta, by the way, Meta, if you're not sure, Meta owns Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp, platforms like that. Meta looks like a growth stock. I don't think that the growth that they've had in the past couple of years is going to maintain. I do think it's gradually going to slow. 
But it is a if we're after growth, this could be a good one, and it could really be a good price in this area. Ideally, I'd like to see it pull back a bit more again, but this is one that should be on our radar. Okay, up next, we've got a company called Yeti Holdings, ticker symbol Y-E-T-I. Now, Yeti's actually a company that I've used their products before. They make things like uh, coolers or mugs and outdoor products, recreational products. They tend to be very good products. I have personally found that they tend to be high-end products, but high-quality products. You pay a big price for them, but the products are fantastic. I've ever, I, although I've used the product, I've never actually researched the company, though. So interestingly, we actually got this one from the investment community that we mentioned before. These were recommendations. All the companies on this list were either recommendations from that or from comments in our YouTube videos. So if you have any ideas for different types of companies we should research, please throw them in the comments below. But with Yeti, Yeti is getting a fair value of about $46 per share. And we can see the stock is trading right around $40 per share. Again, we're taking the more conservative approach here. We're just using analyst estimates going out the next few years which may be a bit too conservative, given the fact that they've had almost 20% revenue growth on average over the past five years. So Yeti looks like one of those that could give us exposure to the retail market, or let's say the high-end retail market, which is likely to struggle during recession. But if we're long-term investors, this could be one that does very well for going out many years, going out, let's say the next decade, this could be one of those great performers. Okay, so our next growth stock, we've got Airbnb, ticker symbol ABNB. Now, this is an interesting one because for anybody who doesn't know what Airbnb does, it's sort of like Uber, but for the real estate market. It's a person, a person, if somebody wants to rent out their property, well, they can do it on Airbnb. I say it's like Uber in that it's sort of like a hotel company, but they don't own any hotels. They're really the middleman that helps connect everybody. But what's most interesting is from a value perspective, is discounted cash flow tends to be best for large blue chip companies with established free cash flow. That way, the idea is how much free cash flow are they going to generate in the future? Discount it all back to today. We want to pay less than that. Well, in the case of Airbnb, this is sort of in that middle area there that they've just started generating a decent amount of free cash flow. So usually, discounted cash flow will come up a bit conservative because their free cash flow is not at that high reliable level yet. But we can see using the, the analyst estimates for just the next three years, again, a bit more conservative, going out the next the three years, we're getting a fair value of about 98 bucks per share, $98 per share, and the stock's trading below $90 per share. This is super interesting to me from the perspective of this could be exposure to a real estate market without really having the risk of the common real estate investments we would get. I would think that real estate's likely to struggle as interest rates ha have risen over the past year and are likely to continue to rise, at least in the near term. Well, this could be an interesting way to get some growth in our portfolio and get exposure to real estate type investments. I haven't done a deep dive on this one. If you'd like to see a deep dive, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so for our next growth stock, we've got an energy company in Chevron. Now, this is a bit unusual from a growth stock list, but if we look at their average growth over the past few years, we could see it's, on average, past five years, it's been about 19%. So growth has been quite good. Now, energy stocks actually had a really good 2022, given the high price of oil in the past year, oil and gas. Well, we might notice that analyst estimates actually have free cash flow declining over the next couple of years. Now, when an analyst tries to, when an energy analyst tries to come up with analyst estimates for free cash flow, generally what they have to do is they have to assume how much the company is going to produce, how much oil they're going to pull out of the ground, how much gasoline they're going to sell at gas stations, things like that. But then they have to make an assumption about oil prices. Many analysts, from what I've seen, seem to be assuming that oil prices are going to be declining. So that decline in free cash flow is likely tied to a decreasing oil and gas price and not necessarily a decrease in operational efficiency. I think that's important for us to remember and for us to distinct between those two analyses are very important when we're doing a deep dive on this type of company. So if we have thought that oil prices have been or oil stocks have been a bit overvalued over the past year, many of them have been, well, this could be an interesting opportunity 
to look at one of the top energy companies out there. Now, just so we're all clear, Chevron, they, they focus on two primary businesses. They have upstream businesses and downstream businesses. Upstream businesses are, they pull oil and grass, gas out of the get ground. That's what upstream is. They drill for oil. They call it exploration and production. That's what they're doing. They're pulling the oil out of the ground. Downstream are things like refining and marketing. Refining is when they turn the oil into gasoline, turn the oil into jet fuel, whatever it is. That is the refining business. Marketing in that typically follows uh, falls things like gas stations. If you go to a Chevron gas station, well, that's in their marketing business. Those are their two primary businesses. The upstream business, they make money. The higher oil prices are, that's where those profits come from. The downstream business, something like the refining business, actually makes most of their money off of something known as the crack spread. If you'd like me to do a deeper dive on this you know, concept of how refiners make a lot of money or how they can improve, where we should look to find out what their profit margins could be, let me know in the comments below. But Chevron paying a 3% or so dividend looks fairly undervalued here. This could be an interesting one for us to consider. Okay, now we've got our first bonus growth stock going into 2023, and that is Lyft, ticker symbol LYFT. So Lyft is an interesting one. This is the competitor, the main competitor for Uber that we mentioned before. And basically it's a car sharing, a taxi type of service, but that doesn't own any taxis. They are, it's a peer-to-peer -peer organizer, if you want to call it. I've never done a deep dive on Lyft, in fact, Lyft versus Uber might be an interesting video if you'd like to see that. Again, let me know in the comments below. But this is an interesting one from a value perspective because the stock's at about 10 bucks per share. The stock is way down this year, but we're getting a fair value of about $23 per share. But if we look at this free cash flow to revenue average over the past few years, well, we can see that the number is negative. That's important because if we tried to do this calculation without analyst estimates, if we tried to just project off historical numbers, well, it would come up as a negative fair value because free cash flow has historically been negative. Clearly, analysts are expecting for free cash flow to go positive over the next few years. So it's very possible that this number, which is more than double the current price, is on the conservative end. Now, it would take a deep dive in this stock for us to really know, but if we're looking for exposure to this type of company and the very obscene growth that they've come with over the past few years, we can assume that there will be some continued growth going into the future. Well, if we'd like this in our portfolio, this could, this could be an interesting, interesting one that gives us unique exposure, again, to an industry that we might not have exposure to in our portfolio. Okay, now our next growth stock for 2023 is CVR Energy, ticker symbol CVI. Now here, we can see that the current price is about 30 bucks per share. We're getting a fair value of about $46 per share. So plenty of potential upside. But there's a couple interesting things to realize. First, look at the dividend. Dividend looks pretty good, 4%. I believe this one was actually on our dividend list as well. But one caveat here, one thing for us to consider, one reason that this is a bonus stock and not in the top five is that if you look at the analyst expectations, we could see it only goes out two years and there's only one analyst. When we on uh, the platform that we had mentioned before, we get analyst estimates from different sources. And one of the things that is important for those analyst estimates is making sure we have a lot. Obviously, if you have five analysts, that's a lot better than having one analyst. Now that analyst has, this one analyst, has free cash flow dropping from one year to the next probably because, as we can see, this is a refining and marketing company. This is a downstream company, which means they focus on refineries converting oil into gas or things like that, gas, jet fuel, uh, distillate, things along those lines. Well, they tend to pay very good dividends. This types of, these types of companies tend to pay very good dividends, but they're very reliant on the profit margin between what they pay for oil and gas, that's their input, and what they can sell gasoline for. They make the spread. That's why it's called a crack spread. The spread between converting oil into gasoline. How much do they make? Again, we could do a video on that if you're curious. But I think a, a company like CBR Energy is a bit more specific, but you got a higher dividend than a company like uh, Chevron. And you could potentially get bigger growth with it because this company, because it is a smaller company, clearly has more growth opportunities.
So if you'd like to sign up to get access to our investing platform and join us on the weekly live streams that we mentioned before, I will leave a link in the description below. I will also leave a link in the description below to both the value and the dividend videos that we already did. And let me know what companies you'd like for us to analyze. We're going to try to go through a whole bunch of companies in 2023. Thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.